Well, I'm Eric. Um, if you don't have my sticker yet, then you can <laughs> get one. Um, I work at Arrow Digital these days, and I don't do anything with DNN, but we do a lot of things with databases. So I thought to yeah, uh, explain a little bit how, how database projects work and uh, how I think that can be leveraged in, uh, in DNN in the future. Thank you very much, Vizans. And thank you to our sponsors. <laughs> that was a quick slide. <laughs> um, this is the agenda. Four points, and there's actually a demo somewhere in between or at the end. But so it's actually mostly demo. Who knows nothing about database projects? One. So. This is the definition of uh, SQL Server database projects as you can find it on the MSDN uh, website somewhere. And uh, there's a couple of cool things about database projects, but for me what, what's very important is you're actually compiling your SQL Server code, which means that before you deploy, uh, deploy your database, just as if you're doing .NET development or JavaScript development or whatever, during the compilation process, syntax is being checked, references are being checked, so if you're referencing a table that doesn't exist, you're getting an error, uh, you get warnings if you're using uh, wrong casing, so if you use lowercase while it, uh, a field was defined in uppercase, uh, you're getting warnings about that, so, so it's, it's a really simple way to increase the uh, quality of your SQL code. And the other benefit is that it's going directly to your source control. So it's, it, yeah, you can easily uh, yeah, have source, uh, history, etc., on, on the same SQL script uh, as compared to what's currently done in DNN is where if a database object is updated, it's in a different script. So you will never see the history of which uh, changes went in which version of, right? So, so you never have a history of your database. Uh, so those, are for me, are, are very big, uh, big benefits. And uh, yeah, I guess I mean, especially knowing your history is is super important. Uh, blame is very nice, right? You can blame someone else. That's <laughs> 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 I think Sebastian would love that feature. <laughs> um, so. I never <laughs> So, so database. Pro so the other thing uh, interesting about database project is that you can have multiple database projects deployed to the same database. So it's not true that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between a database and a database project. So uh, you could start in a simple way saying, okay, DNN Core has one large database project and then a module developer uh, creates his own database project for its own module and both would then in the end be deployed to the same database. Uh, you can go more interesting though. Even in the core, you could already say, I have a database project for authorization related things. I have a database project for pages rela or content related things. So you can separate out your database projects uh, on, b related to the concerns that, that are in that database. Because uh, yeah, if, if you're doing content related things, you might not need anything that has to do with authorization, for instance. But if you do, you can reference that project. So that's the other cool thing. So if you see those two um, database projects, this feature database project can reference the other database project. And there's different ways of doing that. If they're all in the same solution, it's just a, just like with C Sharp, it's a, um, um, it's a uh, project reference. Right, so if you, if you have multiple projects in one solution, you can just reference that as a project. But you can also reference the output from a database project that someone else created, same as with, with .NET. So you could actually publish your database project with a NuGet package, use that NuGet package and um, reference the, the database output from that NuGet package. In that now, uh, it's it's a deck it's a deck file, and that's ex if you 
and that by far is a zip file. And it has an XML representation of the database or of everything in that project. Uh, and, and that's it. And there's some, some small SQL scripts in there, but mostly it's an XML present representation of your database definitions. Uh, so there's actually no, almost no, the SQL scripts are hidden inside the, the XML. Uh, but yeah, it's the thing, the one thing that doesn't work by default, database projects don't support NuGet. So that's like a glitch in the matrix almost. Uh, you can, with, you can do your own tooling to get, make su uh, add support to it because the database project is set just a something that's supported by MS Build. So MS Build can just get if if you just add the proper definitions in your project file, then then it will still work. So so there's a, there's a bit of a hack that you can do, but you can get it to work. And then you have a great way for. For instance, the core could publish multiple database projects that a module developer could just reference and say, hey, I'm using a table that's in the core, and you're good to go. Um, when you start working with database projects, you can start from scratch. So you have an empty database project, you start adding your items, or you can start from an existing database and, and just use the functionality to import a database into a database project. That, that's basically kickstarting your project, and then probably there's some cleanup that you need to do, uh, and there will probably be some uh, some errors that that you then find out that there were in your database before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. That that's how it works, um, and then the benefit is that you get full intelligence. So just as if you're writing SQL code in in SSMS, you're getting in in Visual Studio, you're getting full intelligence, but it's even better. It's syntax checking, but also reference checking. So once you start referencing a database object that doesn't exist, it already puts a squiggly line under, the under that. So you already see, hey, I'm doing something wrong. That's the same thing as it Yeah, okay. Yeah, but that, so, so that full support is there. And that's that's uh, super, uh, super handy. Um, yeah, like I said before, it's also compilation support. So you, your build of the database and a build, it's, it's not really compilation, but it's like, it creates the deck pack. So that when you build your database project, it creates a deck pack. And when it does that, it checks if all the references are there, etc. If if something is wrong, the build fails and nothing, yeah, uh, you need to fix it. And and it has like support for uh, SQL prompt, for instance, the Redcat tool. So if you want, if you like using that, then it has full support of that and yeah, and so it's quite nice. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do deployment. You can deploy right away from, C from uh, Visual Studio. Um, there's a tool that's called SQL Package. It's a pretty old tool. It's a command line tool, and you can use that to, to publish your, uh, uh, your databases. And the, the, b the benefit of that tool is that it's, it's a command line tool, so you can use that in your uh, continuous integration, for instance. Because you can just, yeah, in from your TFS, you can or from any other build uh, release tool, you can just, uh, yeah, call that and then it works. Um, the one, th the thing that I think is interesting for DNN is just build it into the DNN installer that's inside the, the install logic in DNN, um, and you could use DAX services for that. That's that's a namespace that that is available, and uh, yeah, you can build your own installation logic to just install uh, deck packs from within DNN. And then you have full support for deck pack files. Uh, and doing that, it would look something like this. Um, so you create a, you load the file, and then uh, you deploy it with some parameters. And then the, the biggest uh, item in here is actually the options. So if you look at what options you have, you can define whether or not you want to create a new database, um, you can exclude object types because there might be object types that you never want to deploy to your actual database. Uh, so you can exclude those types here. And, and there's some other settings that you can, uh, ca can have in your deployment options. So this is a very rich way of uh, yeah, being able to deploy DACPAC files. And it, I would say technically it's trivial to build something that into DNN that would support that. Uh, it's just a bit of uh, yeah, figuring out how to do it, but it's not it's not 
very complex to, to figure that out, right? So then it would support module developers as well because you have a deckpack in your module and DNN just install, installs your deckpack file. And, it will f the in and the installation will automatically fail if there's something, if this fails, it will just fail the install. Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, I think that's that's yeah. Uh, I think that's. I, I haven't looked that deep into the implementation, but I think that yeah, that's something that that we, that you should be able to figure out to uh, to do that. Um, let's do some demo because I think that was al already pretty much the end of the. There's my mouse, yes. All right, so, um, is it readable? No. I mean, it's pretty much so it's very, mm -hmm. very small. On the bottom left, okay, you can see the... Um, so this is a database that I imported in uh, in a database project from, from DNN. Um, yeah, I can. I, I could show you how that works, but it, it, that that's pretty boring actually. But but basically, this is a representation of a DNN 9.2 database. So it's like yeah, you have all the uh, store procedures here. Uh, all the tables are there, uh, right? So this is this is basically a complete DNN 9.2 database in as a database project. So if I compile this. And this is the only one, yeah. So if I compile this, then uh, starts to run some. Uh, basically, it, bu it builds a mo database model, uh, yeah, while it's comp uh, compiling, uh, and that, that's being written to the XML file. And that actually is one of the things that ends up in the deckpack file. So it's like a complete representation of the database. Uh, I, there's something weird going on here, but it's, it's actually done. So let's see what it uh, what it did. So uh, can I make this a bit bigger? Uh, as you can see here, it actually these are all the warnings that are generated during the build on a standard nothing simple DNN database. Uh, so actually I think most of, so there's, there's a couple of things. So there's unresolved references to objects. That sounds like <laughs> buggy. <laughs> uh, so that, that's one type of error that you would see. There's another type. Um, Can you zoom in a little bit? Yes. So it's not so important what, what fails, right? But it, it's interesting to see that, that during the compilation you actually get, get a, you know, a very good idea of the quality of your SQL code. The other thing, uh, the other type of uh, uh, warnings that you would see is if the capitalization of, um, uh, of your code differs from the definition. So that there is a difference only by case from the object definition. So as you can see, there's like a, a parent ID it has a capital D at the end, and then the definition. <laughs> so uh, it is what it is, but this is one of the reasons that DNN doesn't work with with a case-sensitive database collation. So using a tool like this, it's actually very simple to resolve that problem because this tool shows you exactly where the problems are. Um, so that 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 in and by itself would already be a good exercise to just you know use this to just fix all your issues even if you'd never use it after that. Uh, so that's, um, that's that. So then um, the interesting thing becomes how do you do your data, right? Because there's, um, uh, you have your database structure, but DNN, uh, DNN install also has some reference data that it installs during uh, the installation of your database. Uh, the way that works in, um, in database projects is you can define pre-deployment and post-deployment scripts. 
And typically, though, this would be a data uh, installation in a database would be done with a post deployment script. And um, yeah, you can just define your own data insertion scripts there. And the proper way to do that is with merge scripts. So you, you check first what's already in the database, and then you just add the records that are not there yet. So, so it's yeah, completely version transparent, and you can run it as many times as you want. Uh, so that it's, it's a very easy way to do that. You need to do that manually, or these tools help there's, you? there's tools to, to, to be able to generate those scripts. So, um, so is it uh, like a replacement of uh, Redgate data compare? Uh, so, so the deployment of a DACPAC file or of a database project, w during the deployment, yeah. uh, a, a diff script is generated. So that's part of the deployment, okay. right? So there's a di so that's the other benefit. You can go from any version of the database. So you can go of a database like, like 10 years old, and there's just a comparison. Okay, this is the current version. Just yeah, install anything that's different. There are of course catch a uh, catch 22s right i mean uh, uh, no, nothing is ever s as simple as people <laughs> people <laughs> tell you that it is uh, so so that's here as well um, par particularly uh, challenging uh, for developers that have less experience with databases is how to handle uh, changes in in tables where you for instance you add a field that's non nullable uh, right that then you need to first yeah, you need to have a pre-deployment script that adds the field and then uh, maybe already seeds the data in that field and then uh, and then you can do the deployment but but you because if you do the deployment as if, if you don't do anything then the deployment will fail because you yeah you cannot add a field like that right so so there's some there's some uh, yeah things you need to do to, to make that deploy hmm? when will this script be executed when you have multiple versions of your database there's no there's only one version of the database actually developing the current version yes but if you have a history of a, of a 10 years old database mm -hmm. there might be um, scripts to be executed between no no, no the, during the deployment the tooling the, the deployment tooling cre on the fly creates a different script between the current version and the, ver the version of the database that's in the database server and what you want to deploy so and it deploys the difference, okay. right? So, the, so there's no versioning anymore. It's just you're deploying always the difference between what you want to have and what you currently have. And that difference is, is built on the fly. So that's what the tooling does. It's a schema compare. Uh, it does a schema when compare. Yes, it, yes, exactly. A schema compare between what the target is and what the source is. And then uh, the, difference, it, the difference gets deployed. Apply this to a database that is actually 10 years old. Correct. But you can create this project from now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That that I mean, there's probably challenges that you <laughs> need to uh, that you will run into uh, when you when you want to upgrade a database that's 10 years old. Uh, but yeah, if if your database project is done correctly uh, and and yeah, then it should be possible. So that's yeah. So that's the other other benefit that's potential for for DNN as well is that you can get rid of your the way database versioning works now, uh, which means that you so the way it currently works in DNN is that you lose your history right in source control because you if you want to change a database object you need to write a new script, and that means that you lose the history and how that object was changed over time, mm -hmm. right? So so this this prevents that loss of information and this makes sure that, that you keep your complete history of, of what's in your source control. Sorry? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, so, so but that, that that's a manual thing, right? So so you're no, so your pre-deployment scripts are something that, something that you need to do manually. You need to write them manually and, and say, hey, this is, a, this is how I prepare the database for being deployed to the current version. So it's just yeah. schema, it's not really data. Correct. So, and, and the, so the data scripts, you need to ri write yourself as well. So, and there's tools that can generate those, those data scripts. Um, the default tooling is actually pretty dumb. Uh, to 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 write those uh, data scripts, um, 
I can uh, I can show you how that works. So if I want to deploy this database, I can just uh, uh, I did just the build, so I can do publish, and then I can select to which database I want to uh, want to deploy, and that's basically it. So publish. And that just takes, yeah, well, six seconds to, to deploy a complete DNN database. Uh, but mind you, that's without data. There's no data in a database. Uh, so if I go here to my, uh, to my database server, refresh, then now I have a new database that I just deployed with everything in it, right? So this is, this is a complete DNN database. Um, so if I now want to create a data script to seed my database with the data from a fresh DNN installation, um, there's some tooling that is available in inside SQL Server, uh, which is comparable to, to Redgate uh, tools. Uh, let me refresh this. And then I can do here. Uh, data comparison. So it's comparing from this one, and I'm comparing to this one. So that needs to run a little bit because it's a big database. So, um, so th this is a nice feature. However, the scripts that it generates are actually completely worthless. <laughs> you can you can use it to deploy once, but it's not redeployable, right? So it's not it, it doesn't create re-entry uh, re-entrant uh, scripts. Uh, the, the only right way to write scripts like that is using a merge statement, right? So you build up your table and then you merge between what you want, what you want the end result to be and what it actually is and, and, and that, that's how you do that, right? With a mer uh, SQL merge statement. Uh, so those are, and, but there's tooling available that, that can generate scripts like that or it's actually trivial to write a tool like that that can do that. So it's, uh, but this is just as an example on, on how a post deployment uh, yeah, script would work. So it found all these differences, right? And with with all the differences in records, etc. And then I can just click on generate script, and now it has a long script with all the data that was in a fresh DNN installation. Yeah. yeah. It's also wordless. It's also wordless. Yes. <laughs> because. The, Right, it, it, it does inserts, yeah, it yeah. Is, and, uh, and that make that yeah, yeah, yeah. you can only do that once. Well, yeah. it works for us, so. So, um, so if I want to use that script, and I actually already prepared that. So what you need to have is a uh, a post deployment script in your script folder, and the post deployment script actually needs to be marked as a post deployment script, right? Because otherwise. As you can see, the script was already there on project, but it was set to nothing, so it didn't do anything. It wasn't used. So if I set it as a post-deployment script, then it can easily be uh, be used. And then, uh, because my database is empty now, I can actually deploy this database again to the same database, and it will work, or it should work. So if I, uh, and actually what I did is I prepared that deployment as well. So this is a deployment uh, yeah, profile. Uh, and you can actually store different deployment profiles. So if you want to quickly deploy to your dev server or to your QA server or whatever, you can create multiple deployment profiles and it's easy uh, to just do a quick deployment to, to something. So if you double click that, then it starts doing the deployment. First, it builds the database again. Um, and while that's building, I can actually show you what that uh, uh, looks like okay so it already built and because I double clicked the profile it already has the information on where I want to deploy this to right so it has the connection string to the server and has the the name of the database that I want to deploy this to so if I now click publish it starts publishing again let me in the meantime open this um, so it's a project that's being built right so Yes, we have a bin folder. That's really strange in a database project. <laughs> There's nothing, well, it's actually not even binary, but these are technically not binaries. 
Um, uh, it's a zip file, this is, so maybe it is a binary actually. So I can just open open this backpack file, and this is what's in, what's inside. So um, yeah, there's like a model. So this is the model, and then there's this is actually my post deployment script. So now that I have the post deployment script, it actually adds it to the backpack file, and that script gets run after the database is deployed. Uh, but as you can see, the rest is all fitted in the XML file. So the, the whole of the database definition sits in that XML file. And that's how, when, you, when the tooling is used for, to deploy your, your project, it does a diff between that database model and what the actual status of the database is. And yeah. uh, All right, so my publish worked, right? So that's as expected. And if I now go to a... Uh, uh, to a table, let me make sure that I'm in the right database. So this is my test database. And as you can see, there's like some records in here. So the expectation is if I do this deployment again, that it will fail. And yeah, you know why it will fail, but I'm just showing you that it actually <laughs> follows the expectations. <laughs> so if it if it fails, uh, sometimes failure is good if it if it may if it if it helps you making a point, right? So <laughs> see, so it failed. Um, so yeah, and that and that's because my post deployment script is not re-entrant. So yeah, but but again, it, I mean, it's simple enough to to write scripts that are, that that are uh, able to do that. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, so let's suppose that this is a DNN, um, yeah, DNN core. Uh, database project that has been published uh, with NuGet or something and now I'm a module developer that wants to use some reference to whatever is in th this database in my own uh, module database. Right, so uh, let's see if I can just uh, add an existing project. This I don't get. Visual Studio is a bit goes to a completely different Directory, uh, probably here, here, this one. All right, so my module is called sample. Um, and it only has one table. So this is the support that SQL Server database projects have for database objects, so it has a rich yeah, screen for your database for your table, right? So you can just add new items here, like uh, uh, change by, and then uh, that could be a, a user I the integer, and uh, it might be nullable. So, um, and I can add a, I don't know, default value. It makes no sense, but so yeah, exactly. I know. So, um, so. And you can also actually create indexes here, right? So you can add a new index. Uh, it will create it for you. And then here in your, uh, let me see, there's a, where did that go? Yes, yeah, so here you have your column. So you can click here on your column definition and then you can say, hey, I want to uh, have an index on the module ID, for instance. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that, and you can then also, because it's, it also shows you the text, I think this is actually easier to work with because it shows you both the visual and the, the script, right? So at the same time, you can say, hey, the, this, I, I changed that to module ID, so my, the name of my index should also be module ID, and that's actually easier to, uh, to change here, right? And then uh, here you can say, oh, yeah, that, uh, um, uh, changed by, uh, I made that null, but it actually should be not null, so I can uh, do this, and then if you go here, it actually, right, so it, it keeps it in sync. Uh, so any change that you do here will be reflected here, and vice versa. So it, I think the development, uh, how do you say that, experience, yeah. is much easier in, in database projects. Um, and yeah, you can do anything, so uh, indexes, foreign keys, triggers, so, and foreign keys, that's where it gets interesting because as you can see, I added the foreign key to a different thing altogether. 
right? This is not in my database because I don't own this. So I can actually reference that database and I don't know what went wrong here, so let's delete that and then do that again. So I can add a database reference and this is where if you use NuGet, you would actually point it to a DACPAC file. Uh, so, so and, and again, you need to add some support to the database project to actually support NuGet, NuGet packages, but then the NuGet package just would have the DACPAC file and from here you can simply point to any DACPAC file and then have that as a database reference. Uh, in this case, I don't have to do that because I already have the database project in my solution so I can just reference that database project. Right, but technically there's no difference because in the background it also just references the DACPAC file that was produced by that project. It's the same as if you reference other uh, DLLs uh, in your .NET uh, solution. If you reference another project in the back end, it just references the DLL that gets produced by building that project. Right? Uh, all right, so this looks good. This is interesting. You can say whether or not that reference is a different database or the same database. And of course, that's the, uh, yes. Does this also support tokenization when you do deployment over different environments? Uh, so you can like tokenize this what would, What would you want to tokenize? The database that I'm deploying to. Uh, so, the schema name. So, uh, it support, so yes, it supports tokenization. In, so the tool, you would you need to put the tokenization support in the tooling. So, so normally when you do like continuous integration, you, you, you do, that's what you do, right? You deploy your database to different, different environments, yeah. but that's, it's basically, the, it, those are the input parameters for the deployment, mm -hmm. right? So that you're not tokenizing your database, you're tokenizing yeah. the right. deployment tool. And yeah. that's definitely supported, okay. yes. Uh, okay, so I made my reference to the database. As you can see, there's also actually a reference to the master database which means that I can also rep use any things that are in objects. So for instance, if you want to, uh, usually if you have a script, uh, especially a pre-deployment script, you want to test if a column is there in a table. If not, then you add it. If it's there, then you don't do anything. That, that uses actually uh, some uh, sys objects, something that's in the master uh, database, I think. Right, so so you need to have a reference to the master in order in order to be able to do that uh, kind of thing. Um, so now, if I rebuild my database, and if you notice the squiggly line went went away, right? When I had a reference to DBO the modules, the squiggly line was gone. So now, if I build my database, look at that, all these warnings, and I only have one object. So, so what it actually does, it actually also builds the other project. So it's, just, it's the same as with .NET, right? If you, if you have a reference to another project, it also builds the other project. So that's, that's what happens here. If, if I'm pointing to a DACPAC file, obviously that's not, not happening, right? It's not gonna rebuild the DACPAC file, but it it's, it's still verifies if my references to anything that's in that DACPAC file are valid, right? So that, that's something that will happen. Check the schema inside the DACPAC. Exactly, yes. So as you can see, two, two built, two succeeded, and yeah, we're cool. So what I can now do is, uh, and I actually haven't tested this, so this is just thinking that this should work. I can publish my sample database, sample database project to the same database that I published the other one to, right? So when you do that, it only publishes, it, it doesn't take the reference with it. So yes and no. So. <laughs> So that, that, that's, the, that's the end result is exactly what you're saying. But what, what, while it's doing that, it's actually considering what is in my target database and what I have in my source database. But what I have in my source database is my own small database plus the whole reference. So because from here, it only builds one DACPAC file, but that one DACPAC file will, referen will have a reference to my reference database. So that database model is huge because it has the database and we can look at that actually. Let's take a look at what that database mo model looks like. Uh, so we're here and then bin, debug. Uh, so 
I think this is not a, I mean, it has even the post deployment script, which I didn't add in my little project. So this is the post deployment script from the other database. Which again will fail. Sorry? Which again will fail. Yeah. Yes, you are absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Which is sad. So I can, I can actually fix that, that it won't fail. So let, let's. That means that when you're doing this approach, the references make your end product grow in order. It will be a little bit bigger, but yeah. Is there no way of there, So I haven't done like deep research in this, so I'm sure we c there's a way to come up with you know not having that problem. Uh, but yeah. Um, it so should be in there if you don't want it. Don't reference it. Yeah, but if I if I don't yeah, but if I don't reference it, then I cannot use it. So if I want to use it, then if you want to use it, it has to be you're in absolutely there. right. Yeah. Um, let me see, so... Yep. Well, so you shouldn't reference core tables anyways. You should just use the API and then you solve your own problem, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, helps do, it, it helps people actually make the right decisions. <laughs> no, I, I get your point, though, but... Uh, yeah, you need to do a query and the database yeah. linking to yeah. users or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you, but then, yeah, fix your API. So I need to rebuild and then I can publish. No, no, no. I, so I, I haven't really come up with a good solution for that, but so you can figure out a way probably to install DNN without having DNN install your database, but have your database installed done by the continuous integration tool. You can probably figure a way out how to do that. And even for modules, that would be a potential way of, in so I, I, I was, thought that there's like, if you, if you are a really big shop with like large installations, you don't want to rely on the software product to install itself, right? For large organizations, that's, that's not really the right thing to do. You want to rely on your, on your normal tooling or your continuous integration tooling to do the installation for you. So what, what is an installation of DNN actually? It's an X copy installation. You copy your files and you install your database. D DNN and DNN, that's what a DNN installation is, right? So th that's what continuous integration tools do, right? If you, if you go into TSS, TFS release management, you copy your files, you install your database. That's two steps in release management. So instead of having DNN do that, you could come up with a way or a hybrid way that supports both. So if you don't use your uh, continuous integration, you have DNN solve it, or uh, have, I don't know, maybe you can pass in a parameter in, you know, or, you know, whatever, that, or put that in your web.config, whether or not database installations should be done internally. And if, if that's the case, then your tooling can take care of the database uh, deployment. But doing it like this makes that more easy to have your tooling take care of your database deployments. Right, because in the old style of SQL scripts in, in DNN, there's no way any other tool can install that because it's completely yeah, proprietary and custom. Right, so that's, yes. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I know that Entity Framework has some similar tools, like when you do code first, yeah. um, which will create you the database and keeps it up to date. Yeah. Migration. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but when would you consider to use such a project Maybe I don't think code first with DNN would be a great, great idea, but that's well, I was hoping that this would tie into code first. So, that's what I, that's what I was hoping for. No, it's not, not, not in a way. No, not exactly. Doesn't, this, doesn't, no, no. No, this has nothing to do with code. This is just database management. So, this so is a way to I, manage. When I, when I extend the table, mm -hmm. I have to extend it again and code first. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, so honestly, I, yeah, I, I'm not a great uh, proponent of code first, but. Uh, no, I'm <laughs> database first. 
Maybe yeah, yeah. So this is this database, database first. Then. Yeah. And I link them. Yeah, and then yeah. So. But I want one place to extend my database. Yeah. I, I was hoping that this tool could do that for me, and then suddenly yeah. push yeah. it through. Yeah. Yeah. But if you use entity framework and then you just rerun the the, the macro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. And then the sure. back end. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, it, I don't think this this complicates things greatly uh, for if you're using entity framework. I mean, uh, so uh, anyways, I turned off that post deployment script. So now if I publish, it should actually work. So select the right database and publish. Didi, didi. And what's actually nice, if you use this way of publishing, by the way, you can actually see what gets deployed. So which script was generated as a diff, diff script that gets deployed on a database. So, and as you can see, it's a very small script. So this is indeed only what I have in my database and not what's in the reference database, even though what's in the reference database is fully in that backpack file, right? So yeah. Uh, and if we want to have the proof of the pudding, I should have a sample schema here. So I created a new schema and that's where my table is. So that's that's the other thing that I would, yeah, that, that I think is a good idea is that modules have their own, use their own schema, right? So you're not using the DBO schema, but you put your module in your schema. And that is probably the name of your company, just like you're namespacing your modules, you should also namespace your database scripts. What? So it's easy for DBA or for anyone who's managing your database to see, oh, these tables are b done for this module. We are prefixing them. But yeah, but that's, yeah, that's like poor men's. It's the same, that's but, uh, of course you have uh, better control and better security. Right. Um, because you can put, uh, put permissions right. uh, um, per, uh, per schema. Per right. schema. Yeah. So currently we, do, currently we don't have it. So, so this, so be, just, to, just to be sure, the using database projects doesn't force you to use schemas, okay. right? The, the, it, but it's a good idea to do it because it's easier for anyone to see what is what, right? And the, there's no downside to it, to using different schemas. Sorry? Yeah. It can be a pain in the ass if you're writing directly against a different schema because then you have to uh, add the prefix of schema to yeah, the but query. It makes it a little bit more difficult. Yeah, but uh, on the other hand, if you if you, you, used to it, if, you if you use these database projects to write your queries yeah, in the first place, yeah. then it's almost automatic resolution of your schema. So, I mean, uh, and with IntelliSense these days, it's it's like super uh, super easy. Mm. Yeah, but that's that's what you have IntelliSense for. You just type yeah, users and it will automatically pre prefix the schema in it. I actually, most of the time, you just type dbo.com. Yeah. Sure. yeah, so I, I, I don't see that as a, as a problem, so. Yeah, you only have to. Yeah. It's not really a problem, but I got no bad, let's say, I got plenty of inconvenience and no benefit from this. Okay, so let, let me show you how, how simple that is. So a new query, select. Yeah, I mean, I, I think using schemas is, is a cleaner way of, of yeah, yeah. building your database. You can say uh, use schema and then, then you don't need to prefix at least in the script yeah. and it makes it a little bit shorter. Yeah. 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 Little so, bit yeah, so, so, and it's just a suggestion. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it, well, I was thinking, you know, especially when we were thinking about, okay, what, what can we do to make DNN better? I think, okay, databases is definitely one area where we can, yeah. can make DNN a lot better. <laughs> Right, so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I, yeah, uh, let me see what else. Um, 
Am I running very uh, slow or am I, how am I doing for time actually? It's quite fast, so you have 15 minutes. 15? Uh, right. Um, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, Sebastian has something to say to you as well. So, uh, okay, let me go back to the uh, to the presentation. All right, and then here. So looking ahead. So 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 I was just thinking about a few things that you know that could benefit, <laughs> and this is this is just what I just came up with. Yeah, sorry, this morning. So. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's more like, you know, you know, get to think about things and then, you know, so it's like, yeah, you need to start somewhere with thinking. So <laughs> this, this might be the somewhere where you start thinking. So object qualifier, I don't think there's anyone who likes the object qualifier, right? So let's just get rid of it. Uh, I think that decision was already made, but <laughs> to get rid of it, but <laughs> it's, it's no longer in the installer, so you cannot set it, right? In the, in the visual installer, you cannot set the object qualifier anymore. But so it still exists. I mean, it still supports. Um, so yeah, so use different schemas for different areas of your application. So it's it's clear. For instance, all the tables that belong to authorization type things. So put your users, your roles, your permissions, etc. In, in an auth uh, uh, schema. Put your uh, you know everything that has to do with pages in a in a pages schema. Put everything that has to do with content in a content schema. I mean, it's not necessary or but it, it may make think e things easier for people that that are looking at the database for the first time to see oh yeah all these tables have, have are related to authorization all these tables are related to uh, content you know that's it's just a way to organize your database a bit uh, easier um, and then I like to have a database schema a database project per schema uh, to you know, if you if you do your separation, also do that actually at the database project level. So each schema should yeah should have its own uh, database project. Ideally, I mean it's not necessary, but it's it's again a way to yeah clean up your your project in a way. Um, and then you could publish all your data, all the different core database projects as NuGet packages. And then if someone wants to use those, you just reference the NuGet package and uh, yeah use it. And, but yeah, to your point, those module databases will grow with the size of those projects. But then again, the benefit of using smaller sub-projects in the big DNN project. My point maybe was more in the sense that if you're a module developer and create something like that, you are creating that against your local database. And when you deploy that, you have no control. No, so that's why, so, no, so that's why you would use the Publish NuGet package that DNN core of DNN publishes, right? So your module database would reference the official 9.2 database yeah, project. No, but my point is that then you are bloating your module yeah. into that specific version, yeah. when usually a module is not linked to a specific version of DNN. No? Um, yeah, I, I, that I mean, we would we would need to look into that. Yeah. Imagine that I build my model yeah. using your mm -hmm. approach against DNN seven point mm -hmm. seven, whatever, yeah. seven point four. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would only be the. I think I think that the I think the deployment tooling can fix that. Uh, I'm I'm actually fairly sure that the deployment tooling can fix that. But yeah, you would have to reference. So for instance, if you want to say my module is compatible with DNN seven four two, then you would have to reference the DNN seven four two deck pack. Right, because if you reference the nine deck pack, then you, yeah, you would be referencing objects that might not exist in an older version. So you need to reference the the v DNN database, yeah, deck pack of the version that you want to be compatible with. Uh, and then the tooling would would have to resolve, yeah, that that's if you're installing it on DNN 9.2, the tooling should have to be able to resolve uh, that difference. At install time. At install time, yes, at deployment time. Um, so yeah, at NuGet package support to database projects, um, at Arrow we, we have ways to do that. So we uh, we can use NuGet packages in in our database projects. So th so I know that is possible, um, but yeah, it, it, and it's also not super complex. There, there's just it, and it's also silly that Microsoft didn't <laughs> never uh, add the support for that. But yeah. Uh, what can you say? There's there's a bug open for this for years, and <laughs> they're just ignoring it. Um, and 
I think it's fairly trivial, trivial to add deployment support for Deckpack files in the DNN installer. Uh, I mean, the, the, all the classes are there to do the to do the deployment with, so that that's all automated. You just need to write an installer that that can use that that logic. Uh, I I don't think that that's a yeah major undertaking to to get support for that. And I think you can actually support multiple. You can even have legacy support for older modules that install in an older way, uh, because you can do that in your DNN manifest. I guess that yeah. Um, yeah, and for module developers, you just reference the deckpack files that you need, and then it's also yeah for a module developer, I think it's really beneficial to have that kind of support because your your the quality of your SQL scripts will be much better. Um, no more manual versioning of your scripts. Uh, better quality of your database scripts. Uh, yeah, and yeah, the other things we already discussed. So th those are just a couple of the things that I thought were beneficial to think at least in this direction. And it's n definitely not like the end all be all, uh, be all end all uh, solution. Um, it's it, it, but it's I think there, there's yeah there's there's enough uh, yeah positive benefits here that 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 should yeah make us uh, think about uh, doing something like this. And there's, yeah, there's some things to be resolved, but uh, yeah. There's some further reading, uh, some blog posts and MSDN uh, articles, etc., that give some more insight in how this works. And I think, think there's no questions anymore.